inseparable from the gift of humor, is that of pathos. It was Dickens' misfortune that, owing to habits of his mind already sufficiently discussed, he sometimes elaborated pathetic scenes, in the theatrical sense of the word. I do not attribute to him the cold insincerity so common in the work of playwrights, but at times he lost self-restraint and unconsciously responded to the crude ideals of a popular audience. Emphasis and reiteration, however necessary for such hearers, were out of place in a pathetic narrative. Thus it comes about that he is charged with mawkishness, and we hear of some who greatly enjoy his humor, rapidly turning the pages meant to draw a tear. Chiefly, I suppose, it is the death of Paul Dombey that such critics have in mind. They would point also to the death of Joe, the crossing sweeper, and to that of Little Nell. On a perusal of these chapters, I feel that nothing can be said in defense of Joe. On his deathbed, he is an impossible creature, and here, for once, moral purpose has been undeniably fatal to every quality of art. Regarding the other narratives, it strikes me that they have been too hastily condemned. The one line which describes the death of Paul's mother is better, no doubt, than the hundreds through which we follow the fading of Paul himself. But these pages I cannot call mawkish, for I do not feel that they are flagrantly untrue. The tear may rise or not, that depends on how we are constituted, but we are really standing by the bed of a gentle little child, precociously gifted and cruelly overwrought, and, if the situation is to be presented at all, it might be much worse done. Such pathos is called cheap. I can only repeat that in Dickens' day the lives, the happiness of children, were very cheap indeed and that he had his purpose in insisting on their claims to attention. As for the heroine of the old curiosity shop, distaste for her as a pathetic figure seems to me unintelligent. She is a child of romance. Her death is purely symbolic, signifying the premature close of any sweet, innocent, and delicate life. Heaven forbid that I should attribute to Dickens a deliberate allegory, but having in mind those hapless children who were then being tortured in England's mines and factories, I like to see in Little Nell a type of their sufferings. She, the victim of avarice, dragged with bleeding feet along the hard roads, ever pursued by heartless self-interest, and finding her one safe refuge in the grave. Look back upon the close of that delightful novel, and who can deny its charm? something I shall have to say presently about the literary style, but as a story of peaceful death, it is beautifully imagined and touchingly told.